Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Facebook family. Good morning, X family. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Word Wednesday. We need word today. Wonderful word Wednesday. Yes. Yes. We're going to start this wonderful word Wednesday off with this morning matter. Good morning, Brother Donald Alexander. <laughs> good morning, Brother Stanley Vault. Good morning, Sister D. Demetria Foreman, Sister Brenda Allen. Good morning, Brother Robert Washington. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Facebook family, good morning, X family. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Brother Clayton Willis. Sister Sharon Rudell, praise the Lord and good morning, sis. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to try to start a live on my phone. Sister Jasmine, good morning. Sister Jasmine Ford, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, good to see you guys Sister coming Day. in here. Yes, good morning, Sister Sonia Allen's Jenkins. Good morning, and praise the Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you guys. Come on in here, start your social ministry. Come on in the room. Sister Loretta Richards, good morning, good morning, good morning, sis. God bless you guys. Good to see you coming in on this wonderful Word Wednesday. I know we had the storms raging on last night. Um, the lightning flashing and the thunder rolling. But we're rolling in Jesus with the Word of God on this morning. This wonderful Word Wednesday. Amen. Still here. Amen. By the grace of God, we are still here. That's right, Sister Jasmine. Let's everybody join Jasmine and let's start this social ministry. Let's share, 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 share. Get your ministry on. Good morning, Sister Irma Shavers. Good morning, Sister Tanasha Gray. Happy belated birthday to LaWanda. Ashley Hardwick, good morning, good morning, good morning. And Brother Sister Vault, happy belated anniversary. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Brother Gordon Miranda and Sister Erin Lett. All right. Brother Rob Harper, you're in, in, in the fee from New York. God bless you, sir. Amen. All right. Sister Leslie Noble following from Brooklyn, New York. Good morning, good morning, good morning, saints of God. Good morning, Sister Johnny Harris. Good morning. We love you guys, too. Sister amen. Gwen. Sister Gwen Goshen, Sister Kimberly Gatewood. God bless you guys. Yes, yeah, start your social media ministry. You have a ministry this morning. Just put share, 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 tag, tag, tag. We're going to share, tag, love, like. We're going to get involved with the ministry on this morning. Brother Chuka Wealth King, God, God bless you, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning to everyone joining us this wonderful Word Wednesday. Amen, Sister Johnny Harris. All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. We see you guys coming in on the feed. Go ahead and share to everybody. Brother Todd Floyd, missed you, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right. Have a... Yes, yes, yes. We see you coming in here. Mother Rhonda Chandler, God bless you. And Brother Marcus, amen. Sister Daria Floyd, good morning, sis. Good morning, Sister Cynthia Torrance. Good morning, Sister April Nelson. God bless you guys. Sister Paula Martin, congratulations. It's in order. One more class. Graduate. Yay. Amen. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. And my Sister Nerey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sister Lynetta Dickinson. Dickerson, God bless you. God bless you for joining us. This Pastor First Lady Joan House, God bless you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, family. Sister Camille Tyler, Sister Tiffany Jones, God bless you guys. Good to see you coming in on this wonderful Word Wednesday. We've made it through the storm and through the rain on last night by the grace of God. And we are moving forward for this morning man. A good morning, Brother Greg Shavers. Good morning, Sister Katasia Bell. God bless you guys. Come on in, Sister Lois Watkins. Come on in the room. Come on in the house. Amen. You guys are coming in here. Good. Amen. Start sharing. Start 
start tagging, start getting this word out. Let's get it out to as many people as we can on this wonderful word Wednesday. Good morning, Sister Monique Shields. Amen. Oklahoma's in the house, Sister Miranda Fennessy. Sister Marcia Vogt, Brother Stanley Vogt, both you guys on here. All right. Good morning, Brother Charlie Goins. All right. Gospel Lighthouse in the house. All right, Sister Sherry Nooner, Sister Rita Brown. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Sister Vanessa Jackson. God bless you, Sister Rita Brown. Come on in, everybody. Come on in and invite someone in. Come on in and invite someone in. Yes, Sister Frankie Parker. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, Brother Alaric Baker. <laughs> Coming on in here, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, good morning, saints of the Most High God, Evangelist K. God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right. Come on in the house. Mr. Angela Dobbins, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, we see you guys sharing. Continue to share, 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 share. Yes, tag, tag, tag. Share it to your own page. Share it to your timeline. Share it. Share it with your friends, your family, your loved ones. Yes, yes. It's the Lily Hill. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes. Miss you guys. Yes, amen, amen, amen. Come on in the room and start sharing invite someone in the room with you amen amen amen, amen. good morning sister aaron good morning pastor good morning good morning good morning <laughs> good morning that bed be hard to turn loose when it's raining yeah, yeah yes it is <laughs> yes it is yes it is so we're going to talk about we've been talking about focus and we're going to keep Gotta on focus focus <laughs> We're going to talk about the cost of focus this morning. All right. And we're moving forward this week, talking about the cost. And when you start mm -hmm. talking about uh, the reason why some people don't do certain things, it's the cost involved. Mm -hmm. There's a cost. cost too much. Yeah, it costs too much. I'm willing there, to pay the price. That's right. And that's mm -hmm. why the Lord mm -hmm. Jesus said, count up the cost. Yes. Jesus said, count up the cost before you even start. Mm -hmm. Because we need to understand it's going to cost you something. And, and to follow Christ, it's going to cost you your life. Your very life, you gotta give it, give all. So he says, take up your cross, and he said he need you to just count it up, find mm -hmm. out because it's not mm -hmm. going to be something that we can do half-heartedly. So we're gonna talk about the cost of focus, mm -hmm. cost of it, what it costs you, what it costs me to focus, focus. Since yes. we know that if you focus, you can do the miraculous. Mm -hmm what is going to be the, the cost of it. And that's what we're going to talk about the next few days. Now, we know salvation is free. <laughs> yes, yes. Jesus paid it all. Yes. All to him I owe. We know that Jesus paid the price and our salvation is free. But once we come into this freedom, it costs us something to maintain it. And to, and to, and to, when I say, when I say maintain it, it costs us something to um, focus and to and to. Um, keep what God has already given unto us and what he's already provided for us. Right, so right. So we're going to see in our lesson today the cost um, of focusing and and what areas of our lives that we're going to have to have to pay a price. Yeah, it's going to be a price mm -hmm. that's going to be paid. Mm -hmm. And you would think that the focus wouldn't cost, cost you anything just mm -hmm. to focus on something. Uh, because when we focus, we, God said we can do the miraculous. Mm -hmm. If you focus, yes, you know, if you yes, focus, yes. like Peter was focused on Jesus, mm -hmm. and then he started he start looking at the wind, the wave. But focus costs you something. First lady, let's read that, that key verse there. I think this is in the uh, New Living Translation. Amen. Amen. And we'll get into this, and we'll look at this text. We looked at it uh, the of the week but we want to look at it from a different aspect and really really talk about uh this cost of focus well we welcome each of you coming on um you see we see a lot of you coming on we still want you to share 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 tag yes. tag tag yes. love 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 like 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 yes um, we see your brother wilford you're in the house get on it get on in the game <laughs> all right see your brother um wilford and brother jeremy sister debbie and sister 
uh, Sylvia Hunter, Sister Joyce Franklin, Dr. Rhonda Maddox. Y'all got guys start sharing, start loving, start liking. Come on in, Sister Zatiki. You know you know how to do it. Come on in this game and, and help this social ministry going. And come on, let's get this word out on this morning. The cost of focus. Yes. The cost of focusing. All right. We're coming from Philippians chapter 3. We're going to be reading verses 7 through 11 in the King James Version, but we're going to pull that verse 13 out for our key focus, fo our key verse, <laughs> focus verse, focus verse. I've got those intertwined. Focus verse, key verse is going to be verse 13. Good yes. morning, good morning, Sister Audra. Good morning, good morning. All right. Um, Philippians chapter 3, ver verse 13, the New Living Translation. Good morning, Sister Betty. It reads, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Remember, we pulled this verse out last week, so we're going to continue on in a different vein of focus with this with this word, word and with this passage. So let's read Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. Come on and read along with us. Scroll, turn. Um, you know, touch whatever you got to do on your electronic device or your Bible. Just read along with us. This is the King James Version, Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. And it reads, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ, yea, doubtless. And I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and no doubt count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So we're talking about the cost of focus. And that key verse, the Apostle Paul says, I focus on this one thing. I'm forgetting the past yes. and I'm looking forward to what lies ahead. I'm reaching forward to what lies ahead. We're reaching, we're straining, we're pressing, we're looking, we're moving forward in a positive direction. With focus, focus, the, 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 the way that we focus, he says, I can't look back. I can't turn around. I can't, I can't get off track. I can't get sidetracked. I must remain focused, and I'm going to do this by focusing on this one thing. This is going to be my central theme. This is going to be my central goal. This is going to be the center of attraction of my life. My, my whole world is going to be surrounded. It's going to be aimed toward this focus. Whatever yes. I do, wherever I go, whatever yes. I say, my focus is going to be in mind. What I'm focusing on is going to be key to every everything I, that I do. Amen. And you know the thing about this, to, to focus like Paul is talking about here. And he's saying because he's going to focus in on Christ. Mm -hmm. And that is that is unnatural for us to focus because... We use our peripheral vision. Even now, you use your peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. But in order not to be distracted, it causes, you know, we have to just use tunnel vision and really mm -hmm. focus. Now, he, he's talking about the things that were gained to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, th these are things that were important. Mm -hmm. These were things that uh, defined him in, in, in his life to this point. Now we're talking about we're talking about letting go of all of this. Mm -hmm. And I, I yes. think we need to just let yes. that, yes. you know, just just sit there for a while. Meditate on that. Because sometimes we don't realize the price. That's the price mm -hmm. to let friends go. Mm -hmm. That's yes. a, that, I mean, yes. friends that you've known all your life. Now, Paul going to get in a situation. It, it's not, I'm com I mean, it's not comfortable to, to do that. You know, it's somebody that you've known all your life. It's somebody that you spent time with. Somebody that... And the Lord says, pull away. I need you to pull towards me and, and, and pull away from them. Right. And when you focus on that, some people automatically just going to fall off. I mean, they're not, they're not going to go with where you're going. Mm -hmm. 
They're not going to be in that vein mm -hmm. that you're in. They're just going to fall off automatically. They can't go. They, they, can't, they go. can't go. And, and, and so what, what you have to understand is Paul being raised the way he was raised and everything that he, that was dear to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you know, Gamaliel, the way he was raised as a boy, the, the study of the law, all these friends. Now, these friends are going to turn on him and try to kill him. You know, because of Paul's reputation. Paul was not just not just another uh, Johnny come lately. Paul was being groomed to be the forefront in the head, the successor. Paul was being groomed to be uh, the man, if you if you will. And and now, and and now, I gotta let go all of that. First lady, I've, I've seen so many people when they get to this point, they let go of Christ. When they get to this point, they let go of what's really important, what's what's what should be the main thing, the main focus, because they can't let go of all this other stuff. Or they try to take it with them. You know, that reminds me of Abraham. Huh? You know, a a a Abraham, you know, God told Abraham what to do. He's trying to take a lot. He's trying to bring all these people uh, and still focus. But but Lot was a distraction. And he... Lot will cause you to detour from where God is trying to take you. And it takes you longer to get there because you're constantly wow. putting out fires wow. with Lot. Yeah. You're constantly going on a rescue reconnaissance mission with Lot. You're, 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 you're constantly trying to fight other people's battles and other kings for, for Lot. Yes. You're, you're constantly trying to, to leave where God has has placed you and where he's trying to position you because you are so concerned and consumed. Listen, you're concerned, which consumes you with someone else's downfalls, with someone else's problems, with someone else's um, issues, with someone else's um, business. And it's their business becomes your main business instead of God's business. Right. So Paul said, those things that was gained, those things that made me who I am, those things that gave me prestige, those things that gave me position, all of that. Now, since I'm going to focus on Christ, and, and I believe that every child of God has been at this point, every child of God have been at the point when, when you made up your mind to follow Jesus Christ. And when you say, I'm going to focus on the things of the Lord, I'm going to focus on what he wants me to do, and then made that conviction in your heart, then there are some things that started to happen. And then he said he's gonna focus on all he's gonna focus on this and, and listen to this. Listen to this right here. He says, he says, but loss, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things. I've suffered the loss of all things. Everything, everything that I have ever known all my dreams my aspirations all the stuff that i was really into now that i'm focusing on jesus see this is this is a supreme sacrifice to walk away from all of this this is a supreme sacrifice mm -hmm. i mean this this is this is this is painful and hurtful even just to think about this what paul is talking about how he's giving up all of this all of this mm -hmm. all of this because when you focus on Jesus, if you're going to focus on it, it can't be half focus. It can't be I'll focus on it today and maybe I don't focus tomorrow. He's asking us for yes. total devotion. Yes. Total yes. devotion. Right. And that's not that's not selfishness on the part of God. But he's asking us. That's the commitment. That's what you have to count up the cost. If I'm going with him, I got to go all the way. Mm -hmm. It won't be halfway this and halfway in and halfway out. Yeah. I got to go all the way. Mm -hmm. So we see him in this passage. Um, and it reminds us is when Jesus is talking to his disciples. Um, it's recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke. He, he tells them that they must deny themselves. Take up your cross and follow him. Follow Jesus. He says, first you must deny yourself. Then you must take. It's a it's a price. That's a cost. It's a price. That's a price there. You mean I got to deny myself? Absolutely. What what am I denying myself? 
you, you're going to deny yourself in many areas. You're going yes. to deny yourself in, yes. in, in relationships. You're going to deny yourself in, in fellowships. You're going to deny yourself in finances. You're going to deny yourself in personal time. You're going to deny yourself in so many areas. You're going to deny yourself. And he's saying, you must deny yourself what you want, what the flesh wants, what the flesh desires. You're going to have to deny yourself, take up your cross, Take up your cross and follow the Lord. And so when we when we see that, you know, the disciples said, Lord, we, you know, we left all to yeah. follow you. Yeah. We, you know, we walked what, away from we, it. We, we, we've left everything. Yeah. What's, what's in it for us? Absolutely. That's a good <laughs> you question, know? too. You know, we criticize Peter over that, that, but that's a good question. That question arises, you know, if I'm going to leave all, what's in it for me? What? Why Why am I leaving all? Why, why would I leave all? And follow Jesus. And so when you leave all and follow Jesus, you receive all. You yes. think you, what you're giving up is nothing in comparison to what you're going to receive. But it's a cost. But when you don't understand the cost, it's hard for you to determine and, and to decide what you're going to do. But today we have to focus on on what, what is the cost. Amen. We got to focus on that. And he says, now, the way you're going to be able to focus on that is to count all that other stuff as dumb. Mm -hmm. Paul right. said, Paul said, I count that as dumb. And right. just when you look at his life, if we could look at Paul's life and where he was going bef before Christ, if we, if we could just look at that, I, I think it'd be amazing what, I mean, the prestige he had to give up, mm -hmm. uh, uh, sitting in certain places. And, and this is something that he had been dreaming about, mm -hmm. being groomed you, for his whole life. His, and, and you know the thing about this, Paul is such an amazing person. He's such an amazing person. I think about when, when Jesus met him on the road of Damascus, on the road to Damascus, and and revealed to Paul who he was. Mm -hmm. Paul instantly said, "What would you have me to do?" Wow. I, I mean that. I don't think we grasp how powerful that is. My whole life, mm -hmm. I, I, I can turn on a dime mm -hmm. because of my devotion to to God. Yes. His, his whole life, mm -hmm. I can change everything. I can say, what do you want me to do? You know, even when we, we contrast that with Peter, Peter was raised, they didn't eat certain foods and they didn't do certain things under the law. And Jesus, Jesus came to him and told him to rise and eat. And Peter not told so. him, no, not, not so. so. Not so, Lord. Man, this is such a lesson for I all of us. I have never. Yeah, he's this, going back to his past. What, yeah. What, had, what he's... What he's banking on, what he's um, basking in and boasting in is what I've never done, where right, I've never right, been, right. What, what I've never had, how his own righteousness. And that's what the Apostle Paul says, not having my own righteousness in verse number nine, right, right. which is of the law. We, and and we, we try to lean on and rest on and bank on and, and set, up, set our tents up on what our own um, accomplishments accomplishments are and have been and what we have done and where we have been and what we have attained what we have gained and what we have experienced and what what all uh, we had going on with us right 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 and see the thing about it is he, he says all of that mm -hmm. all of that I count that but done all of that 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 is that is such a focus and peter he, he was resistant to that because uh, he said, never meaning from a child. This has been my lifestyle. This is all I have ever known. Mm -hmm. You know, in this way have I worshiped God. Mm -hmm. This is the worship that I've given unto God my whole life. This is what I've believed. And so we, the, the Lord comes back the second time, tells him again. Peter says, not so, Lord. He comes back the third time. And the Lord says to Peter, what I have cleansed. Mm -hmm. Don't you come? Don't you call unclean? We know he's Calling talking about. Unclean. We're talking about the Gentiles as mm -hmm. he's moving forward. So it took an incredible amount of focus, and and you know what? It's such a focus on God's word, God's law, what God is saying, that you automatically gonna lose some people. You automatically gonna lose some things when we understand that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you have to be able to focus on that. And that's a cause. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible cause. And here he says, I don't want my own righteousness, but I want the righteousness of God. I'm focused mm -hmm. because I have, I want to know him. Mm -hmm. Right. 
I want to know him. See, knowing you won't get me up out of the grave. Knowing you won't get me to heaven. I, I love you. I, I love you, but that's not going to get me to heaven. So I'm when I focus on, you know what? You don't have to cut some relationship loose. When you focus on Christ. They'll cut you loose. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I first got mm -hmm. saved and, and, and all my friends, they would see me come in. They would go another way. I might have been radical. I might have been, you know, overzealous or whatever. But when they, if they saw me, I would see them out the corner of my eye and then look back, they'd be gone, you know. <laughs> you know, something happened to him. You know, so what did they say about Paul? He done lost his mind. He He's mad. You know, he's mad. Look, who would do something like that? And and when 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 they said much learning had made you mad, you know, oh, yeah. so, you know sometimes um, just what we have learned in the past, what we have gained through worldly wisdom, what we we have to understand that even that um, we we must count done. We must count as nothing when it comes as a loss when it comes to the knowledge of the excellency of Christ, my relationship with Him with me drawing nigh unto him so that he can draw nigh unto me. My focus is of such that nothing, nothing that I have attained is more important than right. my relationship with Christ. Right. Nothing, absolutely nothing. nothing. And so the Apostle Paul, he, like you said, he was trained in, you know, from a child, from a boy up. Whole life. His whole life was Goodness. focused around the law. Goodness. His whole life was focused <laughs> around, you know, being a Pharisee. His, That's and this, this, this was the religious um, mm, system mm, of the day. And, and everything that he's been groomed and trained to be. Yes. He's yes. no longer having to put that in the forefront of his life. He's now having to put that aside. That that's like you finding out who you are now. Yes. Your your new identity in Christ. Yes. Yes. And yes, brothers and sisters, once you come in Christ, you have a new identity. Yes. Yes. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And when you try to bring that old identity under the cross, you try to bring that old identity in Christ, you get off focus because those things you have to count but done but lost so that you might know him in the power of his resurrection, in the power and the fellowship of his suffering when you come into this new identity in Christ. So you must count up the cost when it comes to focusing. Focusing has a cost. Are we willing to pay the price? Yes. Price of the focus is, is a cost there. And I won't get into it. If, we, if we're going to move into... Uh, uh, the cost, the cost, one of the costs mm -hmm. of focus is rejection. Before we move there, let me read that 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 key verse, Pastor, in the the Passion Translation, because okay. it, it is it is so it is so enlightening to to see what um, that translation says in Philippians chapter three, uh, verse eight, in the Passion Translation. It says to us in verse eight. Um, it says, to truly know him meant letting go of everything from my past and throwing all my boasting on the garbage heap. Mm. It's like a pile of manure to me now. He says, so that I may be enriched in the reality of knowing Jesus Christ and embrace him as the Lord in all of his greatness to know that to find out who he is, to, to experience and to know who Christ is in his greatness, in his omniscience, in his omnipotence, in his, you know, in his I'm not power, you know, his 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 um, omniscience, just to know the fullness of Christ. Right. And now right. he said, I must count all that other stuff as manure, as dung. He says, I put it on the garbage heap. Pal. I put it on the garbage pile. You know, we take the trash out every week. You know, the, the the garbage man comes to pick up the trash every week. Yes, yes. And so he says, I'm putting it out there for the garbage man to take up. I'm putting it on the garbage pile. I'm putting it in the garbage can. I'm throwing it out and I'm taking it out. I'm taking it out so that the garbage man can come and take it away. I'm throwing it out so I can take it out so that he can take it away. 
And so he said, I'm not clinging to this. Right. I'm, right. I'm not grasping right. and holding right. on to this. Right. But so that I might win Christ, so that I might know Christ, that I might develop my relationship with him, that I might embrace him in his fullness and in his glory. And I love to have that passion translation said, you know, to truly know him. Yes. It meant letting go. Yes. And for us to truly know him, it means letting go. Letting that, go that's, everything. That, that's the cost. That's the price. That's a, that's a humongous price. And if you've never been there, trust me, brothers and sisters, to let go of all of that. You know, Paul says Hebrew of Hebrew, you know, as touching the law. That's that that is who he was. That was the mm -hmm. very essence of yes, who he was. Exactly. From a child all the way up. Mm -hmm. That's what he'd been grown to do. He didn't know anything else. You know, he had to make new friends, he had to everything he had to change and and to let that mm -hmm. go as mm -hmm. as quickly as he did to make that confession. It, it's just amazing. Uh, when mm -hmm. we see the life of the apostle Paul, and when when you when you when you change, when when that transformation happens in Christ, when when it, when it happens, people will say things like, "You're not like you used to be." Right, right, you, and that's you, painful. You, you've changed, right? You know, and when you hear that from friends and family and loved ones, you've changed. You 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 you're not like who you used to be. That 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 is part of the price. That is part of the cost. That is part of the rejection. We'll get into that. That is part of that is part of you um, experiencing what it means to be fully in Christ. Amen. Focus, focus is a price. Good God from glory. Mm -hmm. Focus is a price, and it it takes something to focus. You ready to move? Yeah. To the next. To the next. We're gonna talk about. We're gonna we're gonna get into one of the real high price of focus. I mean, now this is something that I think keeps people from moving forward. Mm -hmm. This this is this is so powerful. So you want to brace yourself for this, because you, people that did incredible things in life, first lady, they were focused. I mean, when you start, when you look at the diaries and you look at uh, what people wrote about uh, themselves and what it took, when you look at Alexander Graham Bell inventing the telephone and Edison and the light. I mean, when you look at how they focused, they would go days without eating, not fasting. They would go days. They were so focused on that, they would lose track of the time. Mm -hmm. This incredible focus. So we, we enjoy it right now. We're enjoying their focus. We're enjoying the fruit of their focus. We can cut on the light uh, switch, and, and we got lights in the house. We can, we can pick up the phone, cell phone. We can do this Facebook because somebody was focused. Somebody was focused. You you look at all of those those men, those great women. Uh, you know, even even the automobile, the airplane, the Wright brothers. There was such a incredible, unique focus, not willing to let go, not willing to let go until they accomplished what they was focused on. So uh, it it is it is an incredible price, and and we. And when, when somebody focused, we reap that. We reap the fruit of their focus. Yes. Think about what I'm saying. We reap yes. the fruit of their focus, and, and sometimes we don't realize this came about uh, through sacrifice. Mm -hmm. This came about through sacrifice, and we'll get to that. But uh, the next one, the, the calls, the calls here. Rejection. 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 Oh, my let's, God. Let's turn oh, to the oh, Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 9. We're going to be reading verses 51 and 53. Yes. And yes. Then we'll um, we'll move on. We'll, let's go by section. This this next cost is rejection, and we kind of touched it on that just slightly just a minute ago. Where it reads in Saint Luke chapter nine, verse fifty one through fifty three, and John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. And it came to pass, when the time was come, that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, and sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him wow. because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. He's focused on it. Mm -hmm. He's focused on it. Yes. He's focused on it. Mm -hmm. Jesus focused on the cross. 
Mm-hmm. It, it was going to take everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you, you think about, well, he was the son of God. No, to do what he had to do. Do n- never think that Jesus wasn't challenged to go to the cross. He was all man, but he was all God. You got to remember his prayer in Gethsemane, if it be possible. Mm-hmm. He prayed that three times, first lady. Mm-hmm. Because we will never know what it took for him to bring salvation. We, he, God laid on him the, all of our sins, our worry, all of that was laid on Jesus to the point where somebody helped him carry his cross. Mm-hmm. Somebody had to help him. What they did to him physically hadn't been for the Holy Spirit, hadn't been for him being who he was. He would he would have died a long time ago, but because he'd had no sin, death couldn't take him. Death couldn't take him, but look at the rejection Mm-hmm. The rejection. Now, last time, you know, last time we talked about him being in Samaritan, it was a party going on. Mm-hmm. Think about that. It was a party going on. I mean, whole, the whole village turned out and they came and Jesus spent a few days with them. Mm-hmm. And, and yes, and, and we touched on this as well, Pastor, talking about they would not receive him. And James and John wanted to call fire from heaven um, well, down and, and, and burn up this city because because this city did not welcome Jesus. This city did not offer hospitality to him, but they turned him away. And the people of this village refused to have anything to do with Jesus. Right. So we see that when the people turn him away, they would not allow Jesus even to enter into the city. Now, they, they, they have rejected him. They have blocked him. They have, they have um, cut off you know, hospitality and everything that they would normally do. And then they tell him, don't even come here, basically. We don't even want him coming in the city. We, wow. we're, we're rejecting him to this point. And there, there are times when, when you make up your mind to follow Jesus and to surrender and to be focused, it will cost you some friendships and it will cost you some family. It will cost you the relationships that you have with some people right. because... They they don't want to accept you as you are now because they want to keep you in the past. They want to keep you as the person who you used to be. They want to keep you as the person that they once knew you as. And so this Jesus that they see now in this Samaritan city, they see him heading to Jerusalem, the place that Jesus is going not only to worship, but he's going to offer himself up as a sacrifice. He's going because it's time for him to move toward the cross. He's focused on the cross and he's not focused on spending time and and having a party and fellowship and spending days with them in this city like he did in another Samaritan city. So when we see this, we see that Jesus is so focused and because he's so focused, people reject him. People, People don't do kindly towards him. You know, and you hear things like, you think you're better than everybody else. Oh, Miss Goody Two Shoes. Oh, Miss Holier Than Thou. Oh, you know, you, you have things said to you because you are focused, because you're now getting your life together. Right. Now you're not, you're not doing like you would think people would be proud of you and be happy for you and be glad for you now that you're saved, now that you're focused, now that you've got your life on track, now that no. you're heading in the right direction. But brothers and sisters, everybody's not going to be glad for you. So so I, ha- I hate to burst your, burst your bubble, you know, because you feel like, oh, I'm doing better now. Oh, and I felt like that when I first got saved. I felt like when I came to Christ and I'm now focused and now I'm getting my life on track and I'm getting better. And, I, you know, that everybody's going to join in and everybody's going to be happy for me and everybody's going to want what I want. And everybody's going everybody's to gonna want to be where I am. No. It doesn't no. work like that. I'm sorry. It doesn't. It doesn't. I'm sorry. It doesn't. And, and, and it's, and it's kind of... Uh, heart wrenching you know to to have loved ones and fr- friends and family to turn away rejection is 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 not something that you you like rejection not is easy. not something that you you're happy for rejection it's um, hard it's it's yes it is it's hard. very hard and when when you feel that rejection it, it it it's something that you have to experience and allow god to help you with and heal you from and yes. and and help you to get through Yes, yes. And so so we see rejection. If Jesus was rejected. Right. We can expect that. We must expect rejection as well. And the, and the thing, first lady, that caused his, his, his rejection was, the thing that caused his rejection was that he was focused. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. He was focused. Now, these are these are people that call themselves religious. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, there's a separation after the separation. You might want to think about that. And that's what gets some people. There's a separation after the separation. See, some people say, well, I don't I don't go. I don't go out and do all this now. And I don't run around. And, and now I'm going to church. And, and you think, wow. You know, I don't I don't smoke this anymore. I don't do all this. And you come tell your family and you think you think everybody's going to be happy because they've been talking about you need to get your life together. And, and you had not been doing right about your family, and your kids, and you get all that together. Mm -hmm. And you think I'm focused on God. And they're like, why are you going to that church? Mm -mm. Why are you mm -hmm. going over there? Mm -hmm. You know, so so <laughs> so many people have been disillusioned mm -hmm. because they they thought they thought that, hey, Everybody's going to be happy. happy. Yes. You know, Jesus was focused on destiny. Mm -hmm. He was focused on, I came into this world to give my life for a ransom for many. I came here to down the cross. I came here to redeem man. And now is the time. See, there's a time in your life that requires a deeper focus. There's a time that requires yes. a deeper focus. Mm -hmm. And this is where Jesus is at. You know, he was always focused his whole life, but, you know, now he's going to another dimension. And the Bible says that, the Bible says that he prayed more earnestly mm -hmm. when he was facing death. Yes. There was a shift, even, even in the very Son of God, the God incarnated in the flesh. There's this shift as he get closer to that destiny. He, he, he understands it's going to require everything I got. Mm -hmm. I'm about to pull everything in to meet this goal. I mean, everything. I, I, can't, I can't leave anything unturned. So the Samaritans, when they saw that, when they saw his focus, yes. look, look at this. It says, and it, it says when, you, when you look at that first lady, that he has sent messengers and all of that, and they did not receive Jesus because his face... His face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 he was going to his destiny. Now they had some problems. The other people got other people want to make their problems your problem. Mm -hmm. Now they had the problems with the Jews. The Jews had problem with them. So people want you to participate in the battle that they got going on. Mm -hmm. Now you just think about that. Whatever battle somebody's fighting. You their friends, you know, I like in high school mm -hmm. and, you know, you my friends and we, and you said this to my friends. Folks got a lot of trouble over that. Folks have served a whole lot of time in prison over that. Some people have lost their life over that. I, I want your battle to be my battle. And the thing about that is many times it wasn't even your battle. You didn't even, you didn't even know those people. It's just that because you doing it, I'm going to join in with you. So, so here... This is a different season. And first lady, we're living in a different season now. You know, we're coming out of, we're in the midst of the pandemic. Lord, Lord is helping us and we see light at the end of the tunnel. But this is a different season. I don't think we saw a pandemic as a different season. It is a different season. It's a different season that requires more focus, more energy. It is a season that that because of everything that was happening, you had to draw from your your, your reserve. You it, it, it challenged everything that you, you were. It's a different season, not just to stand still and maintain, but to fight in the midst of the pandemic, to keep moving forward. Now some people put up the put up the shield and whatever, but you got the shield of faith, and sometimes it's, it's just enough for me to maintain because I'm being hit. But you know, after a while, you you we gotta move forward. So this is what Jesus is doing. This is a different season. Every season of your life requires a different focus. Every season, and the closer you get to your destiny, it's going to require a deeper dimension of focus, like never before. Like, like nothing we've experienced before. Like even when I walk in Christ, we have never experienced, hey, I, hey, I need a little bit more. I need a little bit more. I need, I need more of God now. This is a yes. different season in my life. Mm -hmm. Now think about what I'm telling you. This is a different season in your life. It is going to require a different level of focus. You can't keep focusing like you used to. Because Jesus was always focused. Mm -hmm. He was always focused, first lady. Mm -hmm. But now... But now, you know, we're getting close to Passion Week. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? We we getting close to Passion Week. We can close, you know, now, you know, you know, we're talking about my heart is heavy. We're talking about now, I, I'm, I'm right there. And we don't want to mess up when we get to that point. Mm -hmm. I think about so many people get where Israel was on the very precipice. Israel was on the very border of the promised land. And they end up, they end up going backwards, spending 40 years, and they yes. died. You know, so, you know, it's so many times that people get so, so close, you know, right at, right to graduate, mm -hmm. right? I mean, in high school, you know, how many people in the, in the 12th grade, you know, you know, went 11 years, 11 and a half years, and some of them right to the last test. Think about that. So, so that requires a different push. Mm -hmm. That requires a different focus. Yes. And, and rejection is painful. Yes. And, and Jesus experienced the rejection. You and I, brothers and sisters, we're going to experience this yes, yes, rejection. Yes, and, absolutely. And moving into even from the outside, from first getting saved to knowing Christ, there's going to be a separation even once you're in Christ. There's going to be rejection. There's going to be um, some times where you're going to have to say, okay, God is calling me higher. God is calling me deeper god is he's wanting me to come out into the deep launch out into the deep I, it's, it's we've been on the banks long enough and there's a separation even in the church where there you, you go where you go deeper into the deepness of god's word the depths of god's grace and the depths of god's love and the depths of god's um wisdom and his knowledge and so there's a even a separation where you want to be in bible class you want to be in sunday school you want to be in prayer meeting you want to be there's a separation where those who who come up with excuses of why they can't and why they don't you don't have and why to go to every one you 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 there every time the door open yeah you don't you have know, to do all of that <laughs> you know there's a separation even in the church yes you know yes, there's a separation yes. e even when even in comes, ministry yes even in ministry where where you you're focused on being about your father's business and and people tell you in too much stuff you doing too much stuff you you got your hands in everything you trying to be in everything you trying to go to everything every time i look up every time i turn around you you know <laughs> you this and you that so so there's a fo there's a focus that you have even where where you there's a separation even in the church and so you got to be so focused that even people's opinions, and, and we say opinions are like eyeballs. Everybody's got them. You've got to be so focused that you're not dissuaded from doing what God has called you to do, where God is calling you to, because he wants to do a new thing in your life. And when you're surrendering all to the Lord, all to him, I owe, you know, when you surrender totally to, to God, you're focused to the point where... Um, it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what people let them do what they're gonna do and let them and say what they're gonna say. You're focused. You're not going railing for railing. You're not going eye for eye. You're not. You know. You're not going two for two. You're not going tit for tat. You're so focused. You let them say what they're gonna say. Do what they're gonna do. But stay focused. Yes, and we gotta stay focused. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The closer you get to the Lord, the more focus it requires. The closer you get to the Lord, the more focus. And I'm, 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 I'm willing to say that your your closeness and your relationship with Jesus Christ is going to be dependent on your ability to focus in the different seasons of your life. This is a different season in Jesus' life. Mm -hmm. This 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 is we're talking about. You know where we are right now. We start talking about we're getting ready for uh, going towards uh, Passion Week. We, we're talking about. Uh, Palm Sunday. We're talking about uh, Easter coming up and, and Passover and all of this. This is a different time, and I, I don't, I, I don't think, I don't think that many of us have recognized that the pandemic it it it, it pushed, it shoved us into a different place, uh, a different season of understanding and believing and knowing the, the word of God and, and what God's word said and things come in the past, like he said. So we're in a different season. This is a season that if you don't focus, you're going to find yourself slipping, slipping back to that, that, that other dimension. It's a reason why. It's a reason why Jesus, he, he separated, he had 70. Then, I, then from the 70, he had 12. 
from the 12, he's separated into three. That, there's a reason for that. You look at those different levels, and I promise you, if you study those levels, you're going to see what separated them was their focus. And Peter, James, and John, they were looking at Jesus. And I suppose when they saw Jesus, they wanted, they was upset because you were rejecting, you were rejecting Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, James and John, they saw it, and they was angry about it. <laughs> now, their focus, they didn't know what to do with it. And Jesus, Jesus just politely and, and refocused them and redirected them and let them know, okay, he says to them, you don't know what kind of spirit you have. I didn't come to destroy people's lives. I came to save people's lives. Listen, because they were focused, they saw this. You know, sometimes we're in the same room, we're in the same house, we go in the same places, but we don't see, some things we don't see because we're not focused. He said, did you see that? See what? <laughs> see what? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what did you hear what they said? Did, did, did you feel the climate of the room? Did you did you did you, did you feel that breeze from God? Did, did you sense that move? Now the first lady, we, you know, our, our time is getting low, but I'm telling you, this is this is this is not only for us, this is prophetic. This is where God is taking. There's a shift. Mm -hmm. If you're not focused, you're going to miss the shift. Yes, most definitely. And I think um, some of us have not realized when this pandemic started, there should have been a shift. Absolutely. And God help us. And this, this pandemic should have propelled us into a new dimension of worship and a new dimension of fellowship with Christ and a new dimension of of devotion to Christ and a new new dimension of um, seeking God and drawing nigh to God and as we read earlier you know putting everything else aside for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ um, and I don't think some of us um, actually got it we were so focused on the past right. we were so focused on um, just way the way we used to do things we were so focused on how we used to do church. We were so focused on mm, that mm, we mm. missed we missed the shift and we missed the move of God. And God was trying to take us to a new dimension so that even when we return back to the house of God, we, there should be a greater appreciation. There should be a greater level of anointing. There should be a greater level of... Gotta be. Of, it, 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 it should have... But it doesn't just happen because I go back. It doesn't just happen because I, I, I just automatically um, appear back into the sanctuary. No, no. I was no. outside of the house of God. When David was away from the sanctuary. Yes, yes. His longing to get back into the sanctuary. So intense. It was so, so, yes, yeah, it was so intense. It was so heavy. It was so pressing on him. And it didn't stop him from writing and penning the Psalms. As he was away from the house of God, it didn't stop him from drawing nigh unto God and being in his presence on the mountaintop, in the keels, in the cave, in the on the run. He was still seeking God like never before because of his situation, because of his circumstances. And I think we have we have allowed um, just the world and the cares of this world to consume us to the point that we lost focus mm -hmm. on on our relationship and the depth and the drawing nigh and the getting closer and the developing and the grooming of our own relationships with God that we, we all, I, I'll come on maybe next week or I'll, I'll catch him next week or I'll go back, you know, and we miss some moments and we miss some moves and we miss, we miss some anointings and we miss yes. some powerful things that God was Apple doing Jesus. and has Apple been doing Jesus. even through this pandemic. Yes. And we're expecting yes. to go back into yes. the house of the Lord and expect this great rain of anointing to happen where we weren't seeking God in the interval. We weren't seeking God while we were outside of the house. We were not and, and our relationship with God doesn't begin in the house of God. No, no. And no, I think no. I think people err and have missed it to the point of us Yes, we want to get back in the house of God. Yes, um, it's the place where God would have us to be. But since God knew all this before it happened, right? since right. God allowed us to go through this 
for over a year. We, we there, there should have been a, a something that clicked, something that snapped, something that that wow. that happened in our soul and in our spirits to let us know, okay, what is God saying through here? What is God trying to do through here? Let me draw nigh unto him so that he can draw nigh unto me and, and give me the mind of Christ and let me understand like the sons of Issachar to know the times and to know what we ought to do right through here. Yes, absolutely. This is, this is, and the thing about it is if, if we were focused, we would have seen something coming. The thing about focus and vision go together. You go get a eye test, they tell you, focus on this, you know, mm -hmm. and, and when you focus on that, they'll, they'll close one eye so you can focus. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have, to, you have to understand this, all of this. We talk about the 2020 vision. This this is not, you know, in, tw in year 2020, we're talking about vision. Well, you talk about vision, you talk about focus, and 2020 was a was a year, probably the worst year of most of our lives because it just when the pandemic it was all the other things that happened, the economical stuff, the the, the racism, the uh, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, mm -hmm. all the stuff that happened that cultivated in that year that made this such an unbelievable year. So so as we move, let me let me encourage you, focus. Yes. Because if you don't focus, you'll miss the shift. You'll miss what he's doing. And and all of this that doesn't happen right now. First lady, there's another shift that is happening. There's mm -hmm. another shift. Mm -hmm. There's another pull. And and we want to be so focused, so attentive that we see it. Wow, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. There, that's it right there. That's it right there. Because we have to be focused to be, mm -hmm. be able to see. And, and sometimes people will quit because of the rejection. Jesus stayed focused. Jesus stayed focused. Mm -hmm. I got to stay focused because it's not only going to help uh, me is going to help you. His focus was for our benefit. Mm -hmm. He could not. He could not. He he knew what was facing him, and he had to be focused, even if it meant other people walking away from him. You know, sometimes it concerns me that when people come to Christ and they maintain all the friendships that they had before they was in Christ, you don't have to do anything but just focus. If you focus, stuff will start falling off. You focus. People start fall, falling out. There's this, there's this intense focus, and and that is based on first lady. Listen to this. That's based on vision, mm -hmm. because Jesus was able to see what was getting ready to happen. Mm -hmm. You have to see what's getting ready to happen, and you have to focus. Hallelujah. There's getting ready to be a shift, and if we don't focus, we're missing. Our time is up. <laughs> time is up. We're going to talk about this. We'll be dealing with this, the cost of focus, because we got so much more on this, mm -hmm. uh, the sacrifice that it, that focus calls to time, mm -hmm. how much time. This, When you say focus, you know, it, it seems simple. If you want to do the miraculous, the Lord told us that about 30 years ago. If you want to do the miraculous, all you got to do is focus. focus. But focus requires so many things coming when you said focus, that, that focus, that light, when you focus that light, it turns into a laser and it's able to burn through things that it could when it was scattered. Mm -hmm. Just focus. God is saying, focus everything. Yes. Peter, you're in the midst of a miracle, mm -hmm. but keep your eyes on me. Don't look to the right or to the left. Peter, don't look at the wind. Don't look at the wave. Peter, focus, focus. on me yes. because I have you in, in the midst of a miraculous situation. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. So now he's spoken to Peter. Now he's speaking to us and he's telling us, focus, focus, focus. Mm, mm, mm. Ah. Focus. I want you to hear that the rest of the day, the my rest of the God, week. My God, my focus, God. Focus, focus. We're talking wow. about starting this new year That's off awesome. right. And we must maintain focus. Hallelujah. You can focus for a little while, but we've got to maintain it. And so as we're going through here, don't get distracted. Don't allow the cares of this world to distract you. Don't allow others to distract you. Don't allow um, situations in government to um, distract you. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay, Stay focused. focused. Stay, Stay focused. focused. Stay focused, brothers and sisters. We thank you guys for God joining us you. today. God bless you. Um, we love to Oof. hear from you. You can connect with us at actsministriesonline.org. 
um, you can connect in either one of our offices if you need to um, connect with us that way, um, North Little Rock or Conway. We want you to send in your prayer requests. We'd love to pray, pray with you, pray for you, um, pray through until we break through um, on that um, WTE broadcast at gmail.com you can send it in there once again you can send those prayer requests to wte broadcast at gmail.com this is wonderful word wednesday and we thank you for joining us for this morning manna on today but later on today we want you to join us right back here um, before we come back to facebook live at 5 30 you can join us on that zoom link that they put up for our reading through the bible course um, we're going through Great Truths of the Bible by Alan Stringfellow. You can join us there at 5.30 today. And then at 6.30, we will jump on Facebook Live and come right back here for our anointed Bible class tonight at 6.30. And then at 11.30 p.m., those of you who are night owls, you can join us um, once again um, Wednesday night at 11.30 for um our Words to Empower broadcast on the Victory Television Network. That's VTN at 11.30 p.m. tonight. This is Wonderful Word Wednesday. So we have an opportunity, excuse me, we have an opportunity to get into God's Word all day. We're drawing nigh unto Him so that He can draw nigh unto us. Remember, um, go ahead. If you haven't already signed your 11 to 18-year-olds up, for that annual beauty review, which will be Monday, March the 22nd, um, from 6 to 7.30 p.m. They will have virtual guest presenters, swag bags, food, fun, fellowship, crafts, and door prizes. You don't want your young ladies to miss that opportunity in Conway, um, even though it's in Conway. North Little Rock young ladies are welcome to join. I don't know if we've made that um um, available or, or made that known, but um, yes, it is for all of Axe young ladies who want to participate. Um, their theme is Rise Up, Beautiful One. So get your young ladies involved in the young people's event coming up for that annual beauty review. Also, remember, remember, remember this coming Saturday, it's the executive board members. We will have an executive board meeting at 8 a.m. on Zoom. Um, plan accordingly to meet us on Zoom at 8 a.m. this coming Saturday. Also, uh, we are still continuing getting ready for um, going into Easter. So we want you to continue to join us with that 52-day consecration fast. Those of you who are joining us, um, continue um, seeking God, it costs something. <laughs> it costs something to yes. focus. Yes. And so, yes. to help yes. you focus, yes. let's, let's yes. continue this yes. consecration that we yes. have embarked upon, um, which we will come out on the other side of Easter with. So, um, any more announcements, Pastor? Am I forgetting anything? This is Health Awareness Week. I, I, um, um, exam awareness month we want you to you know take care of your physical health as well as your spiritual health and they have updated the COVID-19 um, accessibility they've they got the group 1c available now so go out and if you're not sure if you um, haven't taken it and you're not sure if you can take it or not go out and look and see who all has been included um, also in that 1C category to see if you qualify. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. God keep you. God make his face day. to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you his peace. God bless you. We love you until this afternoon or this evening. We will see you right back here. Same place, same station. God bless love you. Love you. you.